All right, so the five-year-old is going to be a much bigger challenge than the technology. Um, I'm actually showing you in Teams what I think I want us to do or what you could do with Teams. To be clear, I don't have any guidance from anybody. I don't have any expectations for what people are going to do or not do. I just think this is what could be done. So teachers might use it to have a big group text chat or they could have a phone call that includes everybody, like a conference call. It could even have video. You can share your screen. Uh, that could be the actual screen or it could be just like PowerPoint if you're going through that or OneNote if you're taking notes in that, uh, any of those things. You can also actually record it as you do it. So it's a very low um, effort. You can just do it as you, as you do it. Um, in terms of setting up a team, you're going to have to go to Microsoft, assuming you have an Office 365 account like we do through school. Uh, you might have to click more apps, but the app you're looking for is Teams. So you're going to click on the icon. You're going to create team, join team, create class, give it a good name, etc. Now, you could add students directly, but that's not actually what I would do. I'll show you later how you can make a link and uh, have them join that with a code. The most important concept here is channels. So if you didn't use channels, it would get very unwieldy very fast. It would get very crowded. So channels are basically like an organizational mental schema. So what you're looking at here, these are different channels that I used in this team. So well, let me pause here. So team versus a channel. Team is people, channel is kind of a, a purpose. Team is, for most of us, going to be our class, although that could be more than just our class. A channel is used to organize content. It's actually easier to understand if I switch to um, a fake class I made for Honor Superheroes. Now, you could organize by unit. Unit 1, how to spot a villain, and Unit 2, how to speak to the media things like that. But it could also be useful to, for example, set up different groups. Maybe you're a foreign language class and you want students to be able to converse with each other. You could set up a, a group for just those students. And uh, the neat thing is if you do that, it, it's their own workspace. They can share files, they can have a conversation, they can video chat, and you can see it, but not everybody in the class does. And this one's with the lock. Only the students that are added see that. The students that aren't in that group don't see that, whereas they see all of these. You might find it easier to organize by week. That's another valid way um, to do it. So how should they be organized? That's completely up to you. Again, maybe by unit, maybe by student groups. Now, this is interesting to me. If you have a bunch of people that are teaching the same course, maybe you want to have a team that is all the students taking that course. Maybe it's multiple teachers and you might have organization um, by unit, channels by unit, but then you might have other channels that are for the teacher. So for example, you could have uh, Mr. Hosey have almost like a recitation and answer his questions to his students and Mr. Mellon could answer his questions to his students. It's just food for thought, but it might reduce the uh, the workload because you can make a lecture and then have almost like a recitation. Uh, using notes and wiki, I'm going to come back to because I don't think all of you actually care about that. Some of you care. I care a lot, but some of you don't care. The primary reason people want to be able to do this is to hold a meeting. So let's talk about what that looks like. If you hold a meeting, what it is is essentially a giant group chat, text chat, and you can, you can do other things like, um, I'm going to show you here. Let me pause again. It's like I was starting to say, you can have a conversation. It can be text. Uh, you can have pictures and links and they have some GIFs and stickers and some neat stuff there. You can add a poll. Um, but what people are most interested in is, well, could you have like a video chat? where you see your actual screen as the teacher, like a PowerPoint you're going through? And the answer is yes. So what you have to do is you have to start a meeting hitting the little camera icon. Uh, you'd hit meet now. 
And then when it loads, you look for this arrow right here, this kind of up arrow. That will allow you to share your screen. Now you could share your whole screen, but more likely you're gonna share just one window of it. For example, your PowerPoint window. And if you click on that and you go through your PowerPoint, the PowerPoint will load and you can go through it. And it's actually got some neat tools, like you can write on it, you can go through the slides, you can magnify it. You can even have it caption what you're saying in real time. Uh, again, I talked about the polls. And then finally, if you want to record that, you can do that while the meeting is going on. So once a meeting is started, you can um, hit a button and it will record the meeting. So uh, there'll be like three dots and then you press the red record button and it will start recording until you stop it. And then you should know the video that gets recorded is a little bit on the low resolution side, but it's good enough and it's easy to do just on the fly. It takes a little while, maybe 10 minutes after you're done for it to load. So let's pretend that I wanted to actually do this in a class. So here's my superheroes class, how to spot a villain. What you would do is you'd actually go to what they call posts. And then down here, I mean, I could say, all right, everybody. And anybody could join in, but let me start the meeting. So I click this camera looking icon. It's gonna meet now. And this is me in my bedroom, because 2020. Um, but let's say I wanna share my screen instead of just looking at my face. I click this arrow like this. And maybe I wanna share, instead of looking at my face, you wanna see my um, PowerPoint. So I'm gonna hit desktop, but I don't want the whole screen. I just want the PowerPoint window. So I'm gonna click this, the PowerPoint window. And now this is what's projecting to the students so they can, they can view this. So if I want the PowerPoint to start, you start it like you normally would. I'm not usually a PowerPoint person, so I gotta remember, here you go. You can go here, so now they're seeing this and they can actually on the side, if they hit the little like comment looking button, um, be conversing almost like a YouTube video that's live and you have people commenting on the side. You as the teacher can do things like turn on this laser pointer, that's kind of clever. You can do um, pen or highlighter, so you can draw stuff, highlight stuff. Um, this is if you want to magnify part of it. Uh, I hit the escape button to get out of that. And I'm actually kind of intrigued by the subtitles. If I turn that on, it will actually start writing down what I'm saying. So. I don't know if that records yet with the video, but you know, if a student say didn't have their sound on or something, they could see exactly what I'm saying as I say it. It's a little weird watching yourself. Okay, so there's that. Uh, let me see if I can figure out how to pause my video. I did want to mention that um, one of the sections is notes. So if you go to notes, and I, I have a channel here about notes, if you draw, it will show up. Now I have a fancy computer with a pen, an active digitizer, many of you do as well. Um, but if you don't, you can actually do this on your phone with just, your finger's a little tough, but you can get a stylus real cheap, like under a dollar, and um, be able to write like this on your phone should you uh, need to. Now I will say with the notes, I am a OneNote user. Not everybody is. There are some advantages to using OneNote. Maybe you're used to using an Elmo. You can actually print a worksheet directly to OneNote and then you can write on it. Um, there's a notebook set up for every kid. You can distribute a page to every kid's notebook that only you and they see and then you would um, be able to have them write on it. You can look at it, you can give feedback. It's really whatever level you want. But I'll link a video I have already from a couple of years ago I made of how I use OneNote and how one might choose to, to, to do that. And uh, there's also, you know, wiki pages, which are what these things are at the top. Um, that's how I'm presenting all this information in this particular team. I do want to point out that this team I created is for my uh, in-building colleagues um, to see how one might set this up. Um, so it's very slightly different in that it's meant for, I think they call it staff notebook, something like that, um, versus the, the student one. But the idea is mostly the uh, same here. 
So I think that's uh I think that's it. So yeah, we're gonna put this boat right in the water.